How's it going? This is Christian Espinoza. In this video, we're going to set up Windows Server 2019 in VirtualBox. And we'll make that a domain controller. And then in a future video, we'll add Windows 10 to the domain we set up. So we'll have Windows Server 2019 and Windows 10 running in VirtualBox. And then later on, we'll use Kali uh, also running in VirtualBox to attack the domain. So the first thing you want to do is go to microsoft.com slash en-us eval center. Go to products here. And then click on Windows Server 2019. So we can download a 180-day eval copy. We'll download the ISO so we can install it from scratch in VirtualBox. And just a little bit of information here. Uh, when you, if you click on description, we're going to download it with a desktop experience. If you download the server core, it does not have a GUI. So we want to have a GUI uh, so we can interact with it. Uh, as some of you are familiar with, Windows having a GUI. So we'll make sure as we walk through the install, we include the desktop experience. So this eval is good for 180 days, which is pretty cool. We can click on start your evaluation. Remember, we're going to do the ISO, continue. It's going to ask you for some information here. If you watch the video on uh, downloading Windows 10, you realize that, or you learn that you can just put in whatever you want here. It doesn't really send you a confirmation email or check anything. So just make this stuff up. And we'll put here, all right, continue. Our language, we're going to go with English and click on download. It looks like it's about 4.8 gigs, so it's going to take a little while to download. When it's done downloading, uh, we'll resume the video and walk through the installation. All right, so our ISO is finished downloading. It is this file right here I have highlighted. Uh, it has a awesomely descriptive name. It tells you clearly it's Windows <laughs> Server 2019. Uh, the only reason I know it's this one is because the date is today at 4.22. So let's go ahead and start VirtualBox. And we're going to add a new machine and import this to VirtualBox. So go to Tools up here. So go ahead and click on New. Let's type in Windows Server 2019. Uh, I'm going to put mine in the DVMs folder. You can put it in whatever folder you want to. If you're running low on hard drive space, you may want to put that on an uh, external USB drive. It is Windows. It's not Windows 7, though. So let's select um, Windows 2016 64-bit. That's the closest one we have. All this really does is sort of pre-choose the RAM, the CPUs, the hard drive size, etc. So Windows... 2016 is pretty close. It's close enough, so we'll go with that. Click on Next. So, so it automatically defaulted to 2048 RAM or 2 gig, which is fine. Go ahead and click on Next. We'll go ahead and set up the virtual hard disk now. We're going to use the VDI format. That's fine. We'll do dynamically allocated. That's fine. And we will do the 50 gig drive as, as the default. That's fine as well. So now we've sort of set up the virtual machine. The next step is to install the software in the virtual hardware, basically, we've set up. So let's go ahead and start the machine. And now we need to point it, point it at the ISO we just downloaded. So browse to the ISO. So uh, that's going to be... So browse the ISO. That'll be this one right here. So 17 or 17763379. That should be it for you. Click on open. Click on start. Now it's going to boot off the ISO and start the installation process. This will take some time. Uh, we'll walk through most of the defaults. And once this is done, the next step is we're going to promote this to domain controller. So go ahead and click on next here. Install now. Here we're going to select the Windows Server 2019 standard 
with the desktop experience. Remember, the desktop experience is what gives you the GUI. Without that, we have sort of a, a headless server, as they like to say. So we'll select the second one down, click on Next. Accept the license agreement, Next. Here, uh, we're not doing an upgrade. We're gonna do a custom install. So click on that second one. Go ahead and set, accept the default there or where to install it. And this part here will take some time, so I'll pause the video and come back. So it looks like it finished, it's gonna restart. You don't need to press the key here because otherwise we'll restart the installation over. <clears throat> it just tried to boot off the ISO again, so don't press the key there. All right, looks like it's making some progress here. Almost ready. Uh, it's going to walk us through the graphical user interface of the GUI uh, setup as well. And once this is completed, we'll take a snapshot of it. And then if we do anything else to it, we can take another snapshot. So I'm a big fan of using snapshots at specific stages of your installation process. So like in this case, when the baseline image is done, we'll snapshot it. Then when we make it a domain controller, we'll snapshot there as, as well. That way, if we want to revert back to the snapshot and get rid of the domain, we can do that. All right, so now it's at the screen here where we need to create a password. Windows likes you to use a complex password. So make up a complex password here. You can always change it later on. Just make sure you remember this one. So that's the administrator password we just created. Okay, it's finished installing and finished uh, rebooting. So we're, we're finally at the logon screen. To log in or to, to send a control delete in VirtualBox, we need to hit the right control key, which is the host key, and delete. And that'll send a control delete. So now we log on with a password we created during the install. And we'll, we'll install the VirtualBox tools or the extension pack to fix this like size issue of uh, the screen because it can be very annoying trying to do something uh, on the Windows 2019 server when the screen won't scale properly. So to do that, when this boots up here, if you go over here to VirtualBox Manager or the VirtualBox settings for this machine, you can click on Devices, insert guest edition CD image. So this guest edition CD image is what installs the guest editions, which allows um, the machine to scale properly, properly and also enables the drag and drop functionality from the host to the guest machine and vice versa. Go ahead and click on yes there. So I can click on file explorer down there at the bottom and we'll get that guest additions uh, install going, and then we'll go through the server manager. So here's the uh, D drive. We're gonna install the VBox Windows Editions AMD64, since we are running a 64-bit version of Windows. Just double click on that, and we can accept all the defaults. When that's done installing, it's going to ask us to reboot, but we're not going to reboot right now. So just click on next, next, install, install here. And the reason we're not going to reboot because we're going to go to the server manager and make this domain controller, and then we'll reboot one time instead of like twice. So check, I want to manually reboot later. Click that. Let's go here to server manager. We can close this. So we're going to configure this local server. Server manager pops up by default. We're going to add a role and feature because we're going to make this a domain controller. So click on next here. Role based feature. Leave that checked. Next. Uh, this is the only server we have running. So it's automatically selected. Click on next. We want to make this a domain controller. Uh, so we need to add Active Directory Domain Services. When we click this, a bunch of other things pop up. These are features that are required for Active Directory Domain Services. So go ahead and click on Add Features. We also want to add a, sorry, a DNS server. 
So click on add features for that. It gives you a warning because we don't have a static IP address for this server. It's, it's assigned an IP address via, via DHCP. That's okay, this is just a test environment. Click on continue there. And that's all we're gonna add for right now. Click on next. Click on next here. Click on next, next. And we'll restart the serve automatically if required. Yes, and install. So now we're installing Active Directory uh, domain services, which will allow us to make this domain controller. We still have to go through the promotion process. We had to install DNS because DNS is required once we make this do a domain controller. And then we had some dependencies we installed. And after we reboot, the screen should be fixed as well because we installed the guest additions uh, from VirtualBox. So this will take a little while to install. So when this is finished, we'll come back and resume the video. All right, looks like uh, we can click on close here. You see little, there's a little arrow here, notification. If you click on that, it says post deployment is required. So even though we have set up Active Directory Domain Services, we still have to configure this to a domain controller. So let's go ahead and promote the server to a domain controller and then we'll reboot. Uh, so we're gonna add this, add a new force because we don't have any existing domain. We'll call this um, cats, cats don't local. This is a local cats domain. Leave these as is because we wanna operate with backwards compatibility for Windows Server 2016. Uh, you need to put the password in here for the directory services restore mode. So make up a complex password here. Okay, next. So we're not going to click on DNS delegation. Uh, we have to create the domain in the parent though. So click on next. Cats, that's what we want. Those are fine. Next, next. And when this comes back up, it should be a domain controller for the cats. Um, dot local domain uh, and the prerequisites are met so go ahead and click on install so as you can see it's restarting here you can go ahead and click on close and uh, it should log us out and restart and it should when it restarts the uh, virtual box guest edition should start up which will scale this properly in our window here. Here we go. All right, looks like it uh, finally booted up here. So let's log in. Re remember the right control key and delete. Hopefully it scales uh, properly once we get logged in. Sometimes it takes a second for the service to start. So we do see cats now. So that means we are part of a domain so we can log in. Cats is a uh, before administrator. So we're logging into the, the domain controller, which is awesome. It only took a a really long time to get this set up um, but now we have a domain controller running on Windows Server 2019 which is pretty cool all right so here it's logged in and we'll just do a couple quick tests test to verify uh, it is function as a domain we just logged into the domain we'll look at the uh, domain users and computers and a couple of things hopefully this screen scales properly in a second uh, we'll also look at DNS so Windows administrator tools Active Directory users and computers. So the fact that those tools are there and there's a scaling finally worked. So our VirtualBox guest additions worked. And the fact that those tools are there tells us that it is part of a domain. Uh, so let's just va validate that though. So let's just validate that real quick. So cast.local, we see that and we can close the uh, server manager there in the back. We should have one user, which is the administrator account, but we can add additional users here if we'd like to. Also, we can check DNS real quick because we had to set up DNS. So it should have added a root zone for cats.local in DNS. Let's check that real quick. So let's go to admin tools again. Go down to uh, DNS, and we should see that domain. So let's expand the server. Expand uh, four lookup zones, and there we have cast a local. So this is the name of our server that we just built. Uh, we could rename this to something more meaningful, like uh, DC one or something. Um, but there we have it. 
so this so in this video uh, we walked through downloading a Windows Server 2019 eval ISO we installed it in VirtualBox and then we promoted it to a domain controller and validated validated its working 